Hello there, welcome back. A while back, we took a look at that filter behind me. It's a stainless steel shower filter. Pretty expensive, very good on a koi pond. But today, I'm gonna to show you its little brother. There we go. Yes, it is a small wheelie bin. Let's take a look at it. Okay, we've got the pump just sitting down here for the demonstration purpose. And it feeds into here. This is an overflow fitting from a system or cold water tank. That's where it comes through the side of the bin. Into a series of pipes and bends, which are fashioned into a spray bar. It then goes through a series of foams and through filter media and back out to the pond. So now you may be thinking, well, that's all well and good, but how do you actually make it? You know. This is supposedly a DIY shower filter video. Well, I'll get the water turned off, pull it apart and strip it down and show you all the parts necessary to make this. Okay, I think what we'll do, we'll start with the actual bin itself. That is a 45 litre wheelie bin, which is a really unusual size, but it's absolutely perfect for making a little portable shower filter. And into the side of there, we've drilled a 20 millimeter or three quarter of an inch hole. And approximately an inch up from the bottom of the bin, we've drilled a hole which is about 30 millimeters. That's about inch and a quarter. So that is our inlet. That is just a standard 20 mil fitting from a cold water tank or an overflow system. You can get that from any plumbing outlet. Basically just like a tank connector with an elbow bend on. And into that, I've fitted a 20 mil piece of white pipe, which is just that sort of stuff. Again, get that from a plumb centre. And then onto there, I've fit the pipe, which goes to our pump. So that was the inlet. This is our outlet. Now, ideally, the outlet would probably want to be a little bit bigger if the flow was any more than it is. At present, the flow is 3,000 litres an hour. This does the job admirably as far as being the outlet goes, and you'll, you'll see how it does it in a minute. Now, basically, that is a male threaded hose tail. Before I chop that off, it would have a slightly smaller one going down to a slightly smaller one. So you've got inch and a quarter, inch and three quarters on this particular one, but I've cut it back to inch and a quarter. And onto there, we've got a rubber washer and a locking nut. I'm not sure you would get that from a plumbing centre. You're more likely to get that from a pond or koi outlet. Okay, so for our inlet, what we do, we just take the locking nut off there. We have a washer on that side. Poke that through the hole. And we've got a washer and a locking nut on the inside and that allows us to tighten that fit nut. There you go, that's our inlet. Our outlet's pretty much the same. This one's only got one washer which goes on the outside. So our hose tail pushes through here and our locking nut fits on the inside to secure it. There we've got the secured inlet and down at the bottom there we've got the secured outlet. Now if you notice there's a little bit of a, a raised area here and that allows us to support a bottom grid very very well. And our bottom grid is just made from some plastic dividing mesh. You can get this online, it's normally a lot bigger than this but I've cut it down. It's normally about 2 feet by 18 inches which is approximately 60 centimetres by 45 centimetres. And onto there, I've cable tied some one and a half inch or 38 or maybe 40 mil bits of pipe, approximately two and a half inches or 6.5 centimetres long. So I've basically just drilled holes there and that allows me to cable tie them to the top of here. Now this has been cut to the same profile as the base of our wheelie bin and this just slots in 
and is a secure base to which will allow us to pile our shower media on top of. There we go. There you go, that just sits in the bottom of there. Very secure base. Now all we need is the shower media to go on top of it. Now one potential problem that we are going to experience with a shower filter of any type is something called tracking. And that's when the water sprays in but because of how the filter media is laid out in the, in the filter it all tracks one way. It doesn't necessarily shower through the whole lot and cover every single piece of media. So when we pile the media on top of the grid in the bottom of here we start to fill it up. Not that far up we're going to drop another grid in and what that'll do it'll prevent tracking because if the water is tracking down to one side or maybe it's in a horseshoe sort of configuration this will spread it out again and allow it to rain down over every single piece of media now you don't have to use a grid for that you can use jack matten again i'll put the link to that in the video description that's something that's used in a lot of koi filters and often in shower filters they'll just be media jack matten media, jap matten, media, jap matten and that stops the tracking. We're using this because I had plenty of it. Okay, I haven't talked about the media yet. There's numerous things you can use for media. I mean, if you were ultra cheap, you could even use flow core, which is chopped up bits of plastic pipe. It wouldn't do much good, but it would at least give you some surface area. You can use alpha grog, you can use backy house, you can use pumice. Oh, really the list is pretty much endless. But, we've actually developed a sintered glass shower media. Now, the Biohome Ultra and Biohome Maxi Ultimate are very good in shower medias, but they're quite expensive to produce because they're reasonably labour intensive. So we've actually come up with a very similar mix that uses a little bit more powdered glass which makes this exceptionally hard. You could stack this up forever more and it wouldn't crush. And with water flowing through it all the time and water hitting it in drips, it's not gonna wear away, it's ridiculously hard. I mean, we don't get a problem with the other types wearing away, but this is a real long-term solution. Now, because of all these random ball-shaped pieces, it allows you to get a hell of a lot of media into a very small space. So this little filter, Using this media is going to outperform a much bigger one with a lesser type of media. There you go, you can see how well that fits together. But it also has loads of space between it to allow the water to flow in and around each and every ball. Okay, so on top of that, we're gonna put that second grid in. There you go. And then on top of that, we're gonna put a medium pad. Now you can go with a fine one if you want, but I'll explain why I'm not going with a fine one in a moment. And then on top of that one, we'll put a coarse pad. Obviously that's the way to do it. it. Catches the coarse muck first and then the medium muck then it goes through the filter. Now obviously the water needs some way of getting into the filter so this is our deconstructed spray bar. This is all 20 mil or three quarter inch fittings from Plum Centre or any good plumbing outlet or even a DIY store. Even B&Q or something in the UK would have this. So I'll just speed it up and I'll put all this together and let you see it in its completed form. Okay, there you go, that's our completed spray bar. Water comes in here, it's distributed all the way around here and because of the various holes that I've drilled all around, it sprays out and covers all the media. Now you'll notice at the top here, where these two pipes are joined, is a T-piece instead of a straight connector. Now the reason for that is, I didn't have any straight connectors when I was making this up. And when I put this together, 
I thought, you know, having those open is actually a good idea because if the pressure builds up too much in here, i.e. if all these little holes become blocked, they all get clogged up, it's going to put back pressure on the pump. If they are open, water's just going to come straight out the top of there. So it's not going to knacker the pump. And the spray bar just pushes onto there. Like that. Now, anybody with eagle eyes will have realised that I haven't put our second coarse foam in. That one actually goes over the top of the spray bar. And what that does, it prevents any splashes coming out of the filter. You know, if there was, I don't know, 90% of those little holes blocked, it was really spraying hard against the side, you might get splashes coming up on the inside of the lid and possibly working their way out. Very, very unlikely to happen. If you have that on top of the spray bar, it's never going to happen. So that just drops in over the spray bar. I forgot to mention it before, but having a spray bar that swivels up is extremely useful for keeping the lid up, then we can get in, sort our foams out without the lid falling on us. We don't even need to switch the pump off. <laughs> How about that? Let's get it going. All right, let's have a look inside there, see what's going on. It's obviously coming out okay, so it should be going in. But is it going in right? Oh, yeah, that looks all right. That looks good. And you can see what I mean about those open tops there. Imagine if some of these get clogged, water's gonna come out the top of there. It's not gonna put back pressure on the pump. And that foam stops any splashes coming out. Now, one thing to contemplate is what happens if our foams become horrendously clogged up. Water's going to back up in there and overflow it. Well, we can get around that by simply putting another outlet in up here. Of probably about inch and a half to two inch diameter. So you just have an open pipe coming out of here. Ordinarily, the water would be well below that, but if the foams became terribly clogged, it would back up and it would flow out of our second outlet. And that would also indicate to us that the filter needs a very good clean. Now I'll put the link to the previous DIY koi shower filter I did in the video description. That one's had quite a lot of views. It's a very, very simple concept, but it's obviously been taken up by a hell of a lot of people and also has been very successful as well. But how does this one differ from the plastic container one? Well, for a start, it's a hell of a lot smaller. And with using that new media, we can get away with a one that size. We've got 25 kilos in there, no problem at all. You could probably fit another five kilos in. Like 30 kilos of the best shower media in there. That's awesome. And this one is the sort of thing that is really, really easy to move and I'll show you how. Now this is the best bit about it. We don't need to empty this out. We can leave all the media in there because the water is just going to drain out. There you go, that's the last of the water out. But we've still got 25 kilos of media in there. Difficult to lift. But it's not difficult to roll. And now if we want to take this and put it away in one of our sheds, it's just as simple as taking out the trash. And if we want this to be seasonal, we simply just wheel it back out again in the spring and connect it back up. So there you go, a really easy DIY project for you. And also a very effective one as well, because in there you've got a hell of a lot of filtration happening. And as long as you've got enough media for the size of your pond, you should get the full cycle, which is the reduction in nitrate. Now, as I mentioned before, I didn't use a fine pad in there. I found with this fella, the fine pads just get blocked extremely fast, but I'm using it on this 
huge, ridiculous pond. In a smaller pond, I would probably get away with a fine pad. But there is another way to do all of your mechanical filtration before the water even gets to there. And that's by using a pressure filter. Unfortunately, I don't have my hands on one yet. But in a few days, I'm going down to a show. I'm gonna try and talk them into letting me have a pressure filter for the purposes of making a follow-up video where I'll show you a full filter, a full filter system made really, really easy. So basically, we'll have a pump pumping into the pressure filter. The pressure filter will contain a UV, which will kill the green water. That is the algae, kill the suspended algae. It'll kill the parasites and all that crap as well. The water will then go through all the foams in the pressure filter and instead of the outlet from the pressure filter going straight back to the pond or up to a cascade like it normally would, it'll actually be going into that. That will be our main biological zone. So we're going to have UV filtration, mechanical filtration and really intensive biological filtration as well. Now I've just had a major disappointment because when I contacted the guy that I got this off to say you better get some of these in stock, I can imagine a lot of people want these, he's told me that they're no longer in production. And that's a real bummer because they are a great little wheelie bin and perfect for making a filter out of. But there's a 75 litre version available so I'll put that in the video description, I'll link to it there. That's probably a more sensible sort of size anyway. It'll allow you to get more coarse foams in and it'll also allow you to get more media in as well. If you didn't want to spend the money on the biohome, that is a one that I would heartily recommend. <laughs> Again, you sell that. Yes, I sell that. A lot of other people sell this as well. It's not just me. This is 30 to 50 mil pumice. This is drinking water quality pumice, so it is very, very good. It also mineralizes the water as well. It doesn't have quite the variability of the internal structure as the biohome, but it's pretty good. You know, if you use plenty of this, you should see a full cycle develop. You need a lot more than if you're using the biohome, so your filter needs to be a little bit bigger, but it is good stuff. And if we stick with the theme of a natural lava rock, which the pumice is, this is a different sort of lava rock this out the way. I'll remove these forms so we can see what's under here. Oh, I better take that tree out as well. There you go. That's some red lava rock from a company called Black Rock. I'll put the link to that in the video description. Again, that's pretty cheap and it's reasonably effective as well. It's a very, very good DIY filter media. And the beauty of this one is it doesn't raise the pH. So you could actually use that in the sump of your aquarium if you had fish that didn't like an elevated pH. And don't think that you need to use all of one type of media. You know, you can mix any sort of media in there. Anything is better than nothing. Now adding one of those fellas can help you to complete that cycle and get the nitrates down. That is what we're all after as pond keepers. Now I'll put links to anything that I think might be relevant to you in the video description and also in the pinned comment. So please check them before asking where did I get this from, where did I get that from, how much is this, how much is that. Check it out for yourself. If you thought this video was useful, please hit the thumbs up button, share it wherever you want. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.